Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center for Knife AQ number 53, the Knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. This week, we're talking about some common ways to take care of your knives and whether WD-40 is a good idea or not. We're looking at some non-ball bearing based flippers and we're asking the question, what are some of the worst named knives out there? Let's get into it. All right, if you are familiar with this series, you know the drill. If you're not, or you're a relatively new viewer, we take your questions from the comments section and have a lot of fun answering them. So if you want a chance to have one of your questions featured in a future episode, leave it down there in the comments. Uh, first question for this week comes from James Tristan. Uh, hey DCA, I need help. I'm getting into knives and the first high-end knife that I bought is the Spyderco Advocate with the M4 blade or Advocate with M4 blade. Good knife, very, uh, very flex move right there. Uh, the M4 blade, which is not so good versus corrosion. Uh, I always put WD-40 on it, but it still rusts a little bit. So I have two questions. One, how do I take off the little particles of corrosion without scratching the blade? And what is the best type of oil to use to avoid corrosion? Uh, all right, cool. Um, so the that particular Spyderco is discontinued, unfortunately, so I don't have one in front of me. Um, and I don't have the only other uncoated M4 blade they make either. Um, so I'll just hold up this Benchmade Freak with an M4 blade as an example. This has a coating, however, because yes, M4 is uh, not a very corrosion resistant steel. Now, as for your particular knife, if the surface is just discoloring a little bit, that's not rust, that's patina. Honestly, nothing to worry about. And with something like M4, it's going to happen. You're going to kind of gain that character over time. If it is actually rusting, then there could be a problem. Uh, biggest first best thing you can do to prevent that is keep it dry and clean. Uh, but if you want to get rid of the, uh, the patina, if it's there, or even like little surface spots, if that's happening, I always like to recommend barkeepers friend. Uh, so you can find it in grocery stores all over the place and that, that could clear it up pretty nicely. Uh, onto the WD-40 subject, uh, the WD stands for water displacement in that formula, um, which is really good for cleaning a knife. Um, be, do be careful on certain like plastic type materials with it, however. Um, but it's not so much good for longer term corrosion prevention. For that, honestly, you could go with any kind of knife oil or any kind of oil that's marketed towards knives is going to work really well. There's some high tech stuff. There's low tech stuff like mineral oil that I, uh, I always like. Uh, you can even use something like a tough cloth to wipe the blades down. That should help as well. Um, but it's M4. It's an uncoated blade. It's, it's going to patina a little bit. And that's actually part of the magic of an uncoated M4 blade, uh, in my opinion. So don't let it worry you too much as long as it's not actually rusting away on you. You've got a great knife right there. All right. Next comes from Name Brand Flakes. I uh, wonder which name brand flakes we'll fill in that blank uh blank brand flakes dca friend i love washers and i'm sick of bearings uh, i don't hate them but i think they're overhyped i am looking for washer based flippers specifically right now i've got the kershaw skyline and the steel wheel cut jack and both are absolutely amazing do you have any other suggestions sure thing uh, unfortunately, they don't make the Skyline anymore, but uh, with the cut jack, steel wheel is, when it comes to a, a bronze washer based flipper, I think they kind of nail it the best. Honestly, at any price, and you can get some of their flippers for like 40 to 50 bucks and they flip super well. I mean, I've got off screen here, I've got their Modus, which is FRN handles, really crisp, snappy flipper with washers, no ball bearings going on here. Uh, the, the advantage, of course, of washers is they're not going to get dirty or gritty uh, because it's harder for dirt or grit to get into the pivot versus an open ball bearing system, something like that. Um, so you're already on the, a great track with the steel wheel. If you want to upgrade within the brand, the bar guest is a great option. There's a large uh, four inch blade and this one right here is a three and a half inch blade uh, that comes in about seventy two dollars just over that. Uh, D2 blade steel, so it's same uh, same blade steel as the lower priced ones, but it is a little bit bigger and you do have G10 for the handles here. Liner lock, washer based pivot and same great flipping action. Uh, works really well. You've got a very good all rounder design right here. 
Um, but I will say it, it kind of leans into a little bit of some old school tactical flipper vibes. Uh, in a way, I think this feels a little more like some of the old Almar knives than even some of the new assisted Almar knives that are made today do. It's just kind of an homage to some of those classic knives. Works really well. Great blade shape for all kinds of stuff. Uh, if you want something a little bit smaller, uh, there's the Civivi Mini Mastodon. It's a cleaver, blaced, cleaver based flipper. Uh, sub three inch blade, you've got a nine CR stainless steel. So that's a, a 440C equivalent. Washers in the pivot here. Uh, now there's a similar blade, the Bull Mastiff, which has the same blade shape, but a different grind to it. That one comes with a fuller, this one comes with a full flat grind. The Mini Bull Mastiff does have uh, ball bearings though. So it, that is also a change between the two models. But it's a really cool little knife. Fills the hand about three and a half finger grip for me but you got a good, powerful blade for your bigger cuts. But if you need really bigger cuts, we've got the regular size Mastodon. I mean, how big is this blade? It looks like about four inches here. Um, really, really big guy. That's a lot in the pocket though, and the, the knives you mentioned are significantly easier to carry. Um, if you wanna go higher end than, uh, than these two, two guys, look to uh, Rick Hinderer and Hinderer Knives. Um, pretty much one of the only premium flippers out there that I know of that come with uh, washers uh, or the availability of washers. This one right here is an older XM24, comes of course with washers in the pivot, really solid, robust tactical design. Uh, modern hinderer flippers, what you wanna look for is this particular symbol on the flipper tab right here. And that means you've got the triway pivot. Out of the box, like this Jurassic right here, they're gonna come equipped with ball bearings, but you've got washers in the package that you can swap them out uh, to get whatever type of action you want. So just make sure if it's a newer one and you're unsure, just look for that particular symbol right there. Uh, one more I wanna mention, uh, it's not a, uh, a bronze washer, but we've got this K-Bar Garage 7509 flipper. It does come with a nylon washer, but even though that scene is a, a much more budget-minded feature, Got really snappy flipping action. Uh, price on this guy, about 74 bucks. You've got G10 on the front, stainless steel frame lock on the back, os steel in two different blade shapes. You've got this kind of upswept, kind of drop point uh, shape here, and you've also got a modified sheep's foot shape as well. They feel really solid and are gonna be another really good working knife for you. All right, next question comes from Steven Martin. Uh, hey DCA, how about a suggestion for a work utility knife? Mostly for box opening. Uh, would appreciate something that could easily and quickly be sharpened, but still has some decent edge retention. Thanks so much. Um, it's funny, when I read this question, uh, now you said box opening, and in my mind I was thinking breaking down boxes. So. Opening boxes, most knives are, are gonna do a great job, honestly. Um, but I have one here that's also gonna be good if you need to break down some of that cardboard. We actually did a, a cardboard slayers video a couple weeks ago. I encourage you to go watch that. And I've got to bring, in my mind, what was the star of the show of that video, the Spider Codelica, the humble Spider Codelica, because the blade geometry really comes down to why it's great for it. And you can get it in a Warncliffe profile in addition to the standard profile, which the Warncliffe is going to be really good for breaking down boxes. It's got a type of straight edge that's going to encourage a, uh, the knife to, or it's going to discourage the knife from slipping out of the cut as you move through. But even the, uh, the standard version, you don't have a ton of belly. It's pretty easy to control as well. Uh, price on these comes in about, where are we these days? Um, about 84 bucks uh, for this standard version and same price for the Warncliffe as well. Uh, the other knife I think that did a really good job in that video was the CJRB Crag, but that's got a D2 blade. And you did mention ease of sharpening as uh, one of your concerns, D2 can be a little bit harder to sharpen. The VG10 stainless here is going to be a great choice. Easy to maintain, holds an edge a good long time as well. And I, I said it comes all down to the geometry for cutting open boxes and cutting down boxes. You've got a thin blade stock with a full flat grind on a fairly high blade. So you've got a very slice friendly profile. 
And importantly, as opposed to something like, let's say, well, let's use this uh, Bull Mastiff as an example, because it has kind of a similar edge profile. You've got a big choil on the Civivi right here. You don't have that on the Spyderco. And if you're cutting down through some cardboard and it starts to slip closer to the handle, that plunge line there is actually going to keep it from slipping off the edge. Whereas if you had that choil, it could slip off and just arrest the motion of your cut, which is kind of lame. We don't like that. Um, great EDC knife that is going to flex really well into a working condition like that. I've recommended this to friends of mine in very similar situations for a long time. I just think it is a phenomenal, phenomenal choice, no matter which one you go with. Um, I will say for opening boxes, I might prefer the, uh, the little bit of belly right here versus the Warren Cliff, but that's a bit of a personal preference. Either one of these is going to get the job done. All right, now, before anyone else in the comments mentions it, um, you guys like to mention the Cold Steel Tough Light for this type of situation, and I totally get it. But the grind and geometry with the hollow grind and the, uh, the blade thickness on that, in my mind, just doesn't work quite as well for cardboard specifically as this Spyderco. Um, but you could almost get three of those mini Tough Lights, or there's three of the Tough Lights for the price of the Spyderco nowadays. So there's certainly that to be, uh, to be said as well. So lest anyone accuse me of favoritism, just think the Delica still is just the thing to beat when it comes to a, a cardboard slicing folding knife that isn't crazy expensive. So hope that helps. Next question comes from Herbie Husker. Uh, hey, David, got a question for you regarding kitchen knives. I'm looking for a good but affordable Japanese chef knife, and I'm down to the Shun Sora versus the Miyabi Ko. Which would you go with and why? Or is there another brand and model in the same price range you would suggest? Um, so here we go. We've got the Shun Sora right here. Comes in about 90 bucks. And right now we've got the Miyabi Ko. Regular price on this is about 150, but at the time we're filming this anyway, it is priced at just under 100 bucks uh, on sale. So immediately right there, that gives you a clue. These two knives do sit in a a pretty different strata or a fairly different strata in terms of the, the product hierarchy, shall we say. Uh, but let's start with the, uh, the Shun. Cool thing you've got going on here is you've got their composite blade technology where this section down here near the edge, you know, you can see the, that top line. Think of it like a jigsaw puzzle. The top and the bottom kind of fit together and they're braze welded into place. So you've got, you know, a VG10 cutting edge, you got higher performance there without having to spend the money on that more expensive steel up here near the top that's never gonna do much of any cutting. Um, so that's a simpler steel, especially when it comes out and flares here near the bolster, you've got a lot more material to contend with. So it's cool not to have to spend as much money for some of it. Um, really finely balanced knives, I think between the two, the Shun's actually balanced just a little bit more. I mean, both of them are just the tiniest bit handle heavy when you pinch them right here in front of the bolster, which is gonna be your proper grip. Um, handles here, synthetic, you've got a, a stick tang essentially that's, I believe, epoxied in there. Um, when it comes to which one is nicer, undoubtedly the Miyabi, because you know, you're essentially getting 50 bucks free when you buy it at the on sale price. Uh, it feels a little more finely finished. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with the Shun. There's just sort of a, uh, a crispness of quality to the finished details on here that make it feel a little nicer. And in addition to that, the materials as well are a little bit nicer. The handles here are a pack of wood. So you've got a, uh, a stabilized wood product that's not gonna shrink or swell in the same way that natural wood will. will. Still can a little bit, to a, but to a much smaller degree. You've also got that nice mosaic pin there, which doesn't do anything for performance, but it does look pretty cool. Uh, steel here, you've got uh, FC61. I always have to check what they call it because it's essentially their trade name uh, for Sandvix 13C26 stainless steel which is roughly AEBL from Bowler, Alphabet Soup, I know. Um, between the two, between the VG10 versus the FC61, 13C26, AEBL, BBQ, whatever. Um, personally, I like the, uh, the FC61 because it's a bit tougher than the VG10. And if you're using this 
uh, around the kitchen for more than just like fine vegetable chopping. That extra toughness is going to come in handy, especially on some meats where there might be some bone involved. So I really dig that. Um, in terms of the exoticness between the two, I don't know, you've got a little bit more, you know, Eastern styled handle on the Miyabi, but you've got that really cool blade uh, technology on the Shun. You do have a similar look on the Miyabi, but it's just a, you know, a falsely created look. This is just a single piece of steel. Balance on it, like I said, both are slightly handle heavy, about the same. First time I held it, I thought the Shun might be a little better. You're honestly not going to notice it between the two. Both are going to be solid picks. Both are going to perform really well. Here's where I have a conundrum between the two, which would I go for? Um, there's good and bad to both. Honestly, um, I like the more premium feel of the Miyabi uh, longer term. I'm not sure how deep the, uh, the hidden tang goes in here, but it feels like it might be a little more sturdy. That being said, the, natural or the, uh, the pack of wood there stable as it is might not be quite as stable long-term as the plastic handle on the Shun. Um, funnily enough, Thomas and I both own a knife from the Sora series. I, I have the pairing knife I use all the time. He has, you have the six inch chef, right? Yeah. You and you love that, right? Oh, it's a great knife. It's a great cutter. You can't go wrong with either of them, but at the on sale price, I think, I think you got to go with the Miyabi at this point in time. Uh, once it's back up to its regular price, I could much more easily recommend the Shun depending on your budget. But right now when they're right next to each other, man, that's, that's a heck of a bargain for uh, just under a hundred bucks for that chef knife right there. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. Um, that's, that's, that was harder than I thought it was going to be because I, I didn't really prepare <laughs> I just, I pulled them both off the shelves and, and I'm just kind of evaluating them here on the spot. So I didn't really prepare too much in advance. Um, they're both cool, but yeah, I, I think the Miyabi be, because it's on sale, man, that's, that's really nice. That's really nice. All right. Now we come to our lightning round for today. Uh, Peter Benke asks, uh, whenever I see a cool knife with a cool name, I rename it in my head to see if it's still interesting. Uh, marketing and the word tactical sell a lot of stupid knives to people. For instance, what if the Para 3 knife was called the Night Turtle? It would be purchased by no one. <laughs> My mom likes turtles. I like turtles. In response to that, people buy the heck out of the QSP Penguin. It's the Penguin. Getting back to, uh, you know, bring it back to Shakespearean times, a rose by any other name would still smell as sweet. It's a cool knife, no matter what it's called, but it's called the penguin. There's, there's nothing like particularly, I don't know, admirable about penguins other than they're, I don't know. Uh, I mean, emperor penguins. Well, they didn't call it the emperor penguin now, did, did they? No, that's, that's more like a puffin. <laughs> this is supposed to be the lightning round supposed to be. But this is where I'm going to throw it to you guys. Um, the Penguin's a, a cool knife. I'm, I'm not disparaging it whatsoever. And I'm not here to disparage anything else, but I think this is something where we could all have some fun with. What are your guys's least favorite knife names? Make sure to leave them down in the comments. I think there's going to be uh, some, some good fun to be had all around. Um, that's going to be cool. Looking forward to see what you guys put in there. All right. Kickexplode. Speaking of names, I, I legit did not read his name when I put this question in, in here. Usually I'm just looking at the questions. Kickexplode. <laughs> we need a knife named the Kickexplode. It's got to be assisted opening probably, probably. though. <laughs> Kickexplode. Single asks. action auto. <laughs> I love you guys. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only person who became a big fan of Jesper Vaknes. Sorry. To pronounce his name right, Jesper Vaknes, improving all the time. Uh, after picking up the CRKT Pilar 3 this year, I read this one wrong too. I grabbed the regular Pilar. This is how the hot dogs are made, guys. He seems to be a very prolific designer, so I'm curious which of the many Vaknes knives would you say is a logical step up from the Pilar? See, here it just says Pilar, not Pilar 3. Basically, similar form factor, but better materials. Thanks for all you do for what that's worth that we're clearly finding out right now. Well, here's the regular Pilar, really cool knife, very popular knife. And right next to it, here is the giant mouse ace 
Riv. That's that that says it all. Uh, 220 bucks for this guy. You get contoured titanium rather than flat stainless steel. You get an L Max blade, a little bit more acute on the tip, a uh, little bit more Warren Cliffy versus Cleavery. You get a deep carry or almost deep carry wire pocket clip. You get ball bearings in the pivot. You get a flipper, which the regular Pilar doesn't have. And just a more premium feel and fa fidget factor for the same format as the non number three Pilar. I may have to have to bring this one back again and uh, sorry guys. <laughs> Lightning round. Yeah. We're so fast. Geomar Domingo says, should deep carry pocket clips be standard equipment on all new knife designs? Uh, I say no. Uh, they're very popular with the EDC crowd for sure because they keep a knife discreet. Uh, but there are certain instances where you want the knife to stick up a little bit higher so that it's even easier to get to. Tactical knives and work oriented knives, I think specifically. You know, the Delica right here, you've got enough sticking out. So even if you're wearing a pair of work gloves, it's going to be easier to get to than some deep carry clip designs out there can be because you want to be able to get to your knife when you need it. And especially in tactical situations, that's uh, that's also going to be very essential. So this brings us to our most serious question of the day, which comes from Xavier Guerrero FAQ knife people cringe when non knife people praise stainless steel. Do aircraft people cringe when people praise aircraft aluminum? I'd say probably the same as when uh, veterans hear the term military grade. Doesn't sometimes it means built yeah. by the lowest bit. Yeah, it doesn't always mean much. High carbon stainless steel is the one that, that gets me specifically because any decent stainless steel on a on a knife is gonna have a high carbon content. It, high carbon stainless steel doesn't mean anything. Actually, surgical steel is the, the bad one too. Uh, might as well say as seen on TV, if you're, if you're looking for surgical steel out there, that's all we've got for today. And thank goodness, because I did a great job messing people's questions up today. <laughs> if you want a chance for me to butcher one of your questions in the future, just leave them in the comments below. And if you're interested in these knives, we'll leave links to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our knife rewards program, because if you're going to put your money down on one of these knives, you might as well earn some free money back to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time. So next week we plan things. We're going to try. <laughs> <laughs>